Hey, welcome back. I'm Carissa and this is my garden. Uh, today's video is going to be going through 10 different bouquets that I grew over the course of the summer. I thought it would be helpful. I had just um, made a video about my cut flower seed for my next year, uh, year three as a flower farmer. And um, as I was going through it, I was trying to think about what colors are different next year because this year I actually had a few challenges. I wasn't as um, aware or perceptive of the color scheme I was going for. So unfortunately, I, tr I sort of had a challenge when I was making um, some of the bouquets. Um, but I think some of them actually turned out pretty nice, um, in my opinion. Um, so sometimes challenges make it a little bit more fun too. When you've got a ton of one color and you're just like, oh, what am I gonna do with it? It makes it a little bit more of a challenge, um, but a little exciting too. So anyway, I have 10 bouquets um, that, like I said, I made in the summer. Um, and I will um, go over what the ingredients, the recipe of the bouquet was, and um, the different varieties that I grew. So bouquet number one, um, if I had a name for this one, it would be maybe Cottage Pinks. <laughs> Very soft color palette. And um, what went into this one was purple cone coneflower, Echinacea, white straw flower, Feverfew, Snowball or Virgo, I'm not sure which one. And then also in the background, you can see the single um, variety. Uh, the Bloom Spike of a Hookara, White Scabiosa, and then you can also see the little textured green seed head is a Scabiosa seed head or seed pod, if you want to call it that. Uh, purple Status, Purple Sweet Pea. I think it's the Mammoth Blend. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, Allium Millennium. You can see a few of those little, nice little round purple heads. Pink Scabiosa. Zinnia, I used purple, pink, and red Benares Giant. Crazy Daisy, that's that white little puff or pom-pom. Haliopsis Bleeding Hearts. Snapdragon, uh, purple and black prints. And then I've got some common uh, white yarrow also. So a few of these are perennials, um, maybe almost half of them. And they really saved me this year. Um, I didn't have the best growing season for some of my annuals. They just didn't grow to the size that I've had typically in, in previous years. And they just took a long time to bloom, especially my Cosmos. Um, that was my fault though, I didn't pinch them. Um, pinching definitely stimulates growth for blooms and, and whatnot. Um, but anyway, perennials have been such a great addition as I sort of landscape my acreage. Um, I'm, I'm trying to plant more perennials that, are, that I can use for cut flowers and they've just, yeah, they've just been such a, a lifesaver. <laughs> so the perennials in this one, sorry, I had to move. <laughs> the hot tub was a little bit loud. It was running. It's very cold out, so it's <laughs> trying to stay warm. Okay, so the perennials in this bouquet, bouquet number one, were purple echinacea, hookara bloom spike, uh, allium millennium, and pink scabiosa, and Haliopsis bleeding hearts. Oh, and the common white yarrow. That's a perennial in our area as well. So the Haliopsis bleeding hearts. Um, I planted this in my landscape back here under one of the apple trees, and it was such a pretty plant. Um, I originally just grew it just for a landscape border plant, and it was just so beautiful. I attempted to cut off of it, and it actually held up really well in the vase. So then I ordered, I did a perennial wholesale order a few years ago, and I, I think I grabbed about 24 of those plants because they were just so, so, so great for a cut flower. So if you don't have Heliopsis bleeding hearts, it's a, a good addition for a perennial cut flower. All right, number two, I've got a very sort of muted color palette on this one, coral straw flower. I love the color of that straw flower. Uh, Rudbeckia, and this is the, the common variety. There's no special name to it. It's just Black Eyed Susan, Rudbeckia. Uh, Coreopsis, this one, I will insert the name for this one because I'm not sure. I think this is also a sort of a common Coreopsis because I couldn't find the, the name for it. Uh, White Status is also in there. Uh, another Heliopsis Bleeding Hearts. I used that seriously all summer. And Colorado Yarrow, which is the soft yellow that you can see in there. I also have a sunflower in there, but I, I can't really see the head of it, but definitely any sunflower would be a great addition to a bouquet like this one. All right, bouquet number three. Uh, Rudbeckia, again, the common type. White and Colorado, and I'm pretty sure that was like a muted pink and yellow, the Colorado. Um, Snowball Fever Few, pink Benares Giant Zinnia, silvery rose straw flower. This was such a nice one. It was just 
it's just sometimes nice to have a lighter color or almost like a white tone in your in your bouquet it just adds sort of like something that your your eye will be drawn to because it is white and it sort of leaves room in the bouquet for your eyes to just sort of um, notice something different instead of all very um, strong bold colors white is sort of like a nice uh, break for the eye love lies bleeding amaranth i planted this the first year we moved to our property this probably three years ago love lies bleeding amaranth and it has reseeded for me every single year so i i love that about amaranth i'm sure some people are very annoyed about it but i love uh, a self-seeder in the garden and then i have a pink snapdragon somewhere in there um i, I didn't put the variety type because it, it hasn't bloomed the, the top little spike hasn't bloomed yet so really the variety doesn't matter um just a, a nice spike of an, a, a snapdragon is just a good addition to the bouquet uh yellow zinnia Oh, I should mention, um, I cut the snapdragons. We're only um, a third of the stem are blooming and that's usually at the bottom. That's why you can't see the blooms. So you just see the sort of unopened ones at the top and that just gives you the longest vase life. And then I have yellow zinnia and this is Persian carpet mix. And this is one that I didn't love. <laughs> it was sort of tricky to arrange with, but like I said, sometimes when you have a bit of a challenge, it makes it a little bit more fun. And I was like, how can I make this Persian carpet zinnia look good and it was a little bit hard at the beginning but then I just noticed you know use the color wheel sort of see what complements it and it seemed to me um, adding pink or reds or yellows to the Persian carpet would really really help it stand out and then I've got uh, Cosmo uh, sensation white and pink in there and like I said about the white it's just so nice if you don't grow white cut flowers just add some to your list for next year because it just really adds to the bouquet to have a pop of white and then I've got some uh, pro cut orange sunflowers in there all right bouquet number four uh rudbeckia again the common black-eyed susan type uh blue scabiosa and then more seed heads and those are the green pods you can see that just add that texture um Icelandic poppy white and yellow are in this bouquet nepeta walkers low another great perennial to add to your garden um it just flushed for me at least twice maybe even three times and it was just such a beautiful uh, a beautiful color to add to your bouquet as you can see i use a lot of blue or at least i try to and the the nepeta just adds a lot to it and then i've got a uh, snowball and the single variety of feverfew in there as well okay bouquet number five red auric i think that's how you say it it's technically a grain i believe but this is the red type orach orac <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is it's beautiful and I love it uh, pink sensation Cosmo uh, cherry brandy Rebecca you can see that's just at the bottom there um, and then the spike in there that you might think is eucalyptus I didn't know what it was um, the the nursery I bought it from a local nursery in town um, had it labeled as a type of lamb's ear and I was so excited because I was like oh most lamb's ear are definitely perennials in our area hopefully it'll come back but the more I looked into it the more I realized it was probably helichrysum uh, licorice plant or silver silver licorice plant um, it's too bad it's an annual but um, it just grew it thrived it was um, planted in my woodland garden just on on my right over here and it was a great ground cover it just totally kept um, the weeds away and it just gave me so many stems to cut off of I loved it and it looked kind of similar to, to eucalyptus you know it gave you that little green circular leaf texture so I definitely will grow that again um, honeywort is down there you can see that was a super super nice texture to add to my plants or um, to my bouquets as well it just looks almost like a succulent it was just so so pretty uh, pink snapdragon again I don't have the variety because um, the blooms weren't that open in this picture so I can't really tell but any any pink snapdragon would be a great addition uh, pink zinnia I'm not sure I don't think that's a Benares giant um, I'm not really sure which one it is, but again, any pink zinnia would be a great addition to that. Um, Red Spike Amaranth. I loved this. A friend of mine um, gave it to me. She also has a farm, um, a vegetable farm, but anyway, she had Red Spike Amaranth reseeding itself over her property, so she gave me some of those. Um, and then I've got Pink Celosia, Pompous Plume in there. Uh, Shasta Daisy, which is also a perennial in our area, and I love it to pieces. I love it. Uh, pink Scabiosa also a perennial and double lemon calendula calendula I probably won't grow again it definitely attracts um, aphids it's 
which you know some people like as it's sort of like a trap plant um, but I, I just can't really be bothered with it. It usually reseeds in my garden, my vegetable garden, so I'll leave it there so it'll do its job kind of keeping away the, the bugs that I don't want but I don't know if I'll grow it as a cut flower again. It wasn't really my favorite. All right bouquet number six, purple echinacea, rudbeckia, white yarrow, calendula double lemon, not my favorite but I used it, uh, gallardia or also known as blanket flower, shasta daisies, again a perennial, they're awesome, uh, yellow zinnia and more of those Persian carpets I did not love <laughs> but I just I'm not one to waste so I just thought I'm just gonna cut these and put them in a bouquet and maybe it'll work maybe it won't and I think this one actually turned out quite quite nice and then Oklahoma white zinnias another another one of my favorites I think I'll always grow white zinnias in any form it like it's just such a, a beautiful addition <laughs> okay bouquet number seven I have a hydrangea in there I'm not sure which hydrangea it is i'm sure some of you who are very knowledgeable could tell just by that little floret there um but i'll i'll put the it on the screen here um, more oka oklahoma white zinnias red auric helichrysum the silver licorice plant red spike amaranth i just love this i hope it reseeds and takes over my yard or my garden such a pretty one um the light purple dahlia you see there is uh rembrandt dahlia which is actually technically a mix. Um, where I got it, it was um, oranges, pinks, and purples, and maybe yellows. Um, so it's sort of tricky if you wanted to repurchase a Rembrandt Dahlia, I think you would get more than one color, um, unless they sell them as Rembrandt Purple Dahlias too. I'm not sure. Where I purchased them, they were not sold that way. Um, and then Tetra White Feverfew, another Feverfew, another one of my favorites. And it's also a perennial in our area. It sort of self-seeds, but not in a thuggish garden way. Um, it kind of keeps to itself a little bit, which is nice. I love Feverfew. We'll always grow that as well. And then Colorado Yarrow Pink. And Colorado is the, the type of yarrow that's been bred to give it that sort of color. Um, yeah, so I used that soft muted pink in that one. Okay, bouquet number eight. Blue and white scabiosa, which are perennials. Um, yellow dahlias, these are from seed, so it's um, a new variety. When you grow dahlias from seed, you're creating a whole new um, tuber and also a whole new variety. So these are just um, yellow <laughs> dahlias that I grew from seed. Um, bronze fennel is that little bit of sort of burgundy that you can see. It's kind of a fun um, little texture. I love that. I hope that self seeds. I think it will. Uh, more helichrysum. Nepeta Walker's Low, White Straw Flower, uh, Queenie Lime Zinnia. These were super cute too. I think I'll, I'll probably always grow those as well. And then I actually popped in Culinary Sage to this. If you can see the sort of sage green leaves at the bottom of the bouquet. Um, it was just, I, I thought maybe, maybe I'll grow sage. It's a perennial in our area. I'll just see what it looks like in a bouquet and it held up. I don't think it wilted and I thought it looked quite beautiful in this um, color palette. Maximilian perennial sunflower. These take a while to bloom, but once they do, they just send out tons and tons of blooms all along this one stalk. And it was just like so fun to use them. I had so much, so much um, to use over the summer, oh, later in the summer actually. And then um, at the bottom, you can see that little bit of purple, which is um, China Aster, maybe lavender uh, variety. And then I also have lace flower. I forgot to name that in my little um, list here, but that was a blue lace flower and then yellow snapdragons. Okay, bouquet number nine. Persian carpet zinnia, my least favorite, but I somehow made it work. Cosmo bright lights, another one I probably won't grow again. I don't tend to love the bright orange and yellows. They're not really my favorite. It was a challenge to work with them, but I think this one kind of came together quite well. Red orange, uh, pink venaries giant zinnia, silvery rose straw flower, apricotta cosmos. I love those, I love, love, love those and double yellow calendula, don't really love those. This bouquet I actually named, so I do sell um, these bouquets at a local shop in town and on my Instagram I called them Sunset Dreams and I think my customers really liked them. Um, it was sort of a fun challenge, like I said, to use the bright orange and it kind of came together quite beautiful. It does sort of look like a sunset in my opinion. All right, last one, bouquet number 10, Cosmo Bright Lights. Not my favorite, but I sure did use it. <laughs> Bleeding Hearts Heliopsis, definitely a favorite, like I said, in a perennial. Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth, Black Prince Snapdragon. This is one I haven't spoken on, and the, the reason I can identify it is because the actual stalk 
um, sorry, stem is a dark burgundy. And this was so beautiful. I didn't get a huge, long, tall stem length on these, but the color was just so beautiful. I definitely want to grow these again. And I think I have more seeds. Um, Fairway Spur Dahlia, that's that peachy one you see. Rembrandt Dahlia, again, like I said, when I bought Rembrandt Dahlia mix, there was a different color, a bunch of different colors. This one was a yellow and with orange tips just on the petals. And then Thomas Edison Purple is that, sorry, Thomas Edison Dahlia is the deep purple you see in the background there. And then a purple red straw flower. That one's so pretty in my opinion, very beautiful. And then white status. So that was 10 of my bouquets. Um, I had a lot of fun putting them together this year. I'm definitely learning the art of floristry. It's a challenge, but it's super exciting and I really, really have been enjoying it. Thanks for joining me and I hope you um, maybe learned some new color combinations or some different varieties that you wanna to add to your list for next year. Um, if you had a favorite, maybe put it in the comments. It might be nice to see which one was the most popular in your opinion and just to see maybe if you've grown some of those and um, sort of combined them in the way that I did or maybe a different way. It's kind of nice to see what our big uh, community has done. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Um, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.